Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Michael here. Seduction is a GNU Linux desktop Linux distribution based on Debian SID and is therefore some kind of alternative to Debian SID. Today we are going to take a closer look at Seduction with KDE Desktop. Stay tuned! Seduction was born in 2011 out of the former Aptosid community, but before that there were already stations from Knappix to Sidux to Aptosid to Seduction. A remarkable development, right? But what's the difference between Seduction and Debian Sid? First, much of both distros are equivalent. The minor differences are that Seduction offers a rolling Debian distro with a graphical installer while Debian does not offer SID as a direct ISO release. To install Debian SID you either have to install Debian Stable first and convert it to SID via testing or you install the mini installer. To make it short, if you want to have a rolling Debian system, Seduction is a much easier and faster way. Seduction also brings its own kernel and scripts, but it also offers support via forum and IRC. Let's come to the technical key points. The minimum requirements vary depending on the desktop and variant. Seduction itself gives the following specs. CPU, 64-bit processor. Memory, it depends on your desktop. KDE Plasma, at least 4GB of RAM. XFCE, at least 4GB of RAM. LXQT, at least 512MB of RAM. XORG, at least 512MB of RAM. No X, so that means without a graphical user interface, at least 265MB RAM. Let's come to the disk. At least 5GB hard disk space for NUX. At least 15GB hard disk space for all other variants and at least 15 gigabytes of disk space if you install on a partition formatted with ButterFS. As graphics, there is VGA graphics card and an optical drive or USB media is required. Seduction is a rolling distribution, means there is always a brand new software and app stack. As package management, there is APT to the hand, but in addition, depending upon the desktop, a further solution, for example, Discover with KDE Plasma is provided. Furthermore, Synaptic is also at your side. As package, the Debian package is used. Flatpak is basically on board, but without FlatHub as a source. If you want to start with Seduction, open a browser and go to the download area on the Seduction side. You click here, download and then installation media. Scroll down a little bit and now you came to the selection of the desktop editions. KDE Plasma, LXQT, XFCE, XORG and NOX. I installed KDE Plasma and you can choose between an EU and a US mirror. I am located in the EU so I clicked here. And then you can download the ISO file. If you want to verify the ISO for consistency, direct at the download of the respective edition, you'll find the files with the verification code below the ISO, for example here. The downloaded ISO should then be flashed on a USB stick with a tool like Etcher. If you install in a VM, for example VirtualBox, you can save this step. If the ISO is on USB, you have to shut down the computer, connect the USB stick and set the BIOS or UEFI to boot from USB and then start the live system. Then you can try out live and that completely without obligation or you start the installation. The installation is assisted by Calamaris installer. The steps are similar to example Linux Mint. So if you can install Linux Mint, you should be able to do it with Seduction. Now let's check up some important hacks. If you want to update a system, you can do it graphically or via Synaptic. The Seduction developers recommend you do this in a console so that you get information about possible errors. In a console, I would recommend the following important commands. Refresh package sources, apt update. Update packages, apt upgrade. Full upgrade of packages, apt full upgrade. Remove unnecessary packages after upgrade, apt auto remove. Refresh Flatpak packages, Flatpak update. The fully automated chain would look like this apt update and and apt upgrade minus y and and apt full upgrade minus y and and apt auto remove minus y and and Flatpak update minus y. What is the target group? Newscomers and beginner are clearly out here. Anyone who uses SID or Seduction must be able to handle the terminal and also be able to analyze and solve the problem independently in the event of an error. 
So Linux knowledge is essential. And you should also bring time for error case. Because if something tweaks, it can range from tender to hard. And if the system doesn't start up, you should be able to invest enough time. Maybe Debian Stable or another LTS distro is suitable for a system that has to be there immediately. If you want to have the newest of the new in the Debian Cosmos, you can get it here. Now let's come to the system measurement. My system of KDE Plasma occupied 8.7 GB of the disk. The system memory was at 1.2 GB. The number of installed packages after the first boot was 2626. At the time of creating this video, KDE Plasma version 5.27.2 was available. The concept of the desktop shouldn't knock anyone's socks off. Anyone who has ever worked with Windows should be reminded here. The classic concept with a bar at the bottom, with a menu, quick starters and right you have access to system indicators. It is delivered in dark design, but you can change that to light in the system settings. The light theme is called Breeze and the dark one is called Breeze Dark. As usual with KDE, you can widely customize your themes to your liking. Most themes, etc. are available at the push of a button. So, what does that mean? Let's click here to Breeze and apply and you see it's switching from dark to light. If this isn't enough for you, just click here on Appearance and then Get New Global Themes. And here you can select from a wide range of possible themes. I won't do that now, I just want to show it to you. I will go back to the dark theme. Now let's check the pre-installed software. We have GNU Linux kernel 6.2.7. As browsers we have Firefox, GNOME Web and KDE Conqueror. As email client there is Kmail. As office package there's LibreOffice. As software container there's Flatpak. Now let's come to the general pre-installed software. The pre-installed software is quite lush and should offer more here compared to Debian SID with KDE. It's a question if you deliver more or less. I see it so. If the focus is on beginners, like Ubuntu for example, it offers a choice whether a normal or minimal installation. So newcomers are picked up very well and get a reasonable pre-selection of apps with the normal installation. Whether distros that are aimed to experienced users should pre-install so much software remains to be seen. I think a little diet could not hurt. But hey, at least there are no games pre-installed. So let's have a quick look. I will scroll through all applications and you can pause the video if necessary for you. Otherwise, I will then go forward. Seduction provides a user manual for free. We know something comparable in that form from Amex Linux. Here I would also like to point out this great work. The manual is available in German and English language. It is very detailed and you notice a lot of hard blood flowed into it. Let's have a quick look. I'll make it full screen. And go down for you to have a quick overview. So you have different chapters here. You can choose whatever you want. It's a very, very well work. In the menu category System, there is also an entry kernel remover. I will click it now. And then it asks me for my administrator password. And now a pop-up come up and here I can select all the kernels that can be removed. So now where we can prove is this is the only selection or the only possible selection. Not to worry, I will show you. Open a new terminal window or console. And then go to boot directory. And then you see we have here two kernels installed. 6.2.6 minus 1 and 6.2.7 minus 1. The selection here is 6.2.6 minus 1. And now we are checking what kernel I am running here. And you see I have 6.2.7 minus 1. So that means the old kernel can be dropped. It's not necessary anymore. A great helper. With some Debian based distros this is totally neglected. So 
with time the boot directory can fill up. Now let's come to my conclusion. If you had to choose between Debian SID and Seduction, what would you take? My tendency would indeed go to Seduction if one of the offered desktops would be my first choice. So as a Debian SID user with for example KDE or XFCE, I would rather use Seduction. You can see that someone here takes the Debian SID base and with moderate additions put together a coherent package. But all this with the idea to give everything back to Debian. In addition, Seduction feels committed to the core values of the social contract and the DFSG of Debian. As a GNOME user, I would probably have to install the version without a GUI and uninstall GNOME afterwards. All in all, I like Seduction and it represents the better Debian SID in my eyes. But it is a pity that you have to fork Debian for a certain customization and that you can't find this practice in Debian itself in that form. Here Debian is in my eyes something too universal, but that's the way it is, I have to live with it. What do you think about Seduction? Interesting alternative to Debian SID or are there reasons against it? If you subscribe to my channel, give a thumbs up and activate the bell, feel free to write it in the comments. Especially good comments get a heart for me and are pinned. That's it for today. I thank you for the kind attention and wish you a nice week. See you next time ladies and gentlemen. Peace.